Hey y'all, it's Carmen with Real Life Real Wife, and I am here, and as I've been working once again on this week's Binder Club, I've ran into a couple of things that I thought, you know what, I remember when I first started out, how I just didn't know anything. So, with that being said, I've watched video after video, after video, after video, and it wasn't, I remember getting so frustrated. I was about 10, 11 months in, and I realized as a new paper crafter that there was an item out there I had nothing about. I had no idea, and I didn't even learn it from a crafter. I learned it from someone who crafts, but they are a YouTube hauler, and they mostly haul, um, and I will give her credit, that is K is for Karen, um, on YouTube, if I can leave her description in the box below, I will, if not, I will, um, actually hashtag her, and one of the things I was just so shocked about is that I had been struggling for months, and long story short, I watched one of her videos where a crafter had told her to buy one of these glue adhesive erasers. I'd never heard, I'd never heard of it. I'm like, what? And then I started realizing I had been watching for months and months and months and months all these professionals never sharing this little tip. Well, with that being said, I went out, as soon as I saw one at Hobby Lobby, I got it. And now Dollar Tree is carrying them. So, hashtag first tip. When you are paper crafting and using glue or even tape, double-sided tape, you want first and foremost one of these adhesive erasers. If you cannot find them, at your Dollar Tree, which I have not been able to find them. I have been gifted them from Dollar Tree, but I have only found mine from Hobby Lobby. I'm sure Michael's and Joanne's and, well, I can't even say if Tuesday morning has them because I've not seen them there either. But if you can find one or ask a friend to pick you up one and pay them back, it's worth everything. Here's the thing about this is that it does work. You've got to be gentle, but my first tip is get um, um, an adhesive eraser. But second tip, if you noticed, and I've left this one, I'm trying to show you where all the glue starts gathering up, and you see this side is not. Well, this side is not, and this one's got very little. The reason why this side does not is because I actually use, these are chrome, cobalt, nickel, made in China. My husband calls them dykes or snippers. I thought they were <clears throat> there to cut wires because I've used them to cut, but... What I do after it starts wearing down and I get all this, it doesn't want to work as good. So I take these and I actually just kind of clip. This is my number two tip is that I clip them and I pull that off. And so I clip a little bit of this rubber away so that it does work and clean up. You can see it building up right there. And then I'll clean it off. And I clean it away. So it's like almost brand new again. But trying to pick this stuff off is not easy. So if you can go to Harbor Freight or to Walmart and pick up one of these little simple tools. They're not expensive. But it does cut. And they are amazing. So this is my tip number two. First Get you um, <clears throat> an adhesive 
eraser because it will save you time and it will save you a lot of frustration. But not only that, I would get you a little clipping tool. You could probably use your scissors. But with me, these are high quality. These are Tim Holtz um, tonic scissors. I'm not going to mess them up by clipping rubber. Just not going to do it. Now, maybe I would take a cheap pair, let's say, from Walmart or Dollar Tree, and I could cut. Let's see if this will cut. Yeah. Um, for me, it's not my go-to, but if it's yours, then that's fine. But you can just take a section and clip. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to kind of show you how this works. Um, let's see. This one, I think I started, yeah. You can see where I started, and this was covered like this side. Not sure if you could see. I'm trying to, maybe. And then this side was exactly as bad as this side. So I've cleaned it up some on my new clipped edge area, and I just rub it. And then I just kind of clean it off here and there where it needs to go. I try not to hit the glitter because the glitter can get taken off too. But I try to clean up the gold area <clears throat> where glue may have um, escaped a little bit. Because you always want, you know, as clean as possible. You can't make it perfect. And that's that's the awesome thing about crafting is that you don't have to make it perfect. But there's some of us who have issues with OCD. Like, oh my God, I just want to erase and erase and erase until it disappears. And then you over erase. And then you've messed up your product. So you don't want to do that. Um, you just want to get the edges and the dullness and the shine in the background again. And that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm not going to sit here and do this the whole time. But I just kind of want to, let's see if I can show you this little area, how bad it is. I'm not going to get it perfect. But maybe I can get it better. If, you know, we'll see. And then, of course, I cleaned that side. So I'm going to use that corner too. The corners are my favorite because they get into areas where the side does not. Now, if it was a bigger surface, that'd be different. But, tip one, get you an adhesive eraser. Number two, make sure that you keep the edges clean um, because they will not clean if you don't clean them. And let's see, what would be my next tip? <clears throat> See, that's a little bit better. A lot better, actually. I'm not sure if you could tell. But that's a lot better. I still got some cleanup to do, but we'll work on that in a little bit later. Um, My next tip, glue. I would highly recommend trying out many, many glues. Because... There are some that are really, really expensive. If I could pull out all the glues I've had, um, I immediately would. I'm trying to look and see. Um, I have arch glitter glue. I have tacky glue. I have fabric tack. I have Mod Podge. I also have reptile glue. I have yet to use this one, actually. <clears throat> um, I have glossy accents, but I don't think that's really like... No, this is a clear dimensional adhesive. And then I also have clear tacky gel. Uh, more Mod Podge. Oh, and Tombow. So, as you can see, I've used a lot of different glues. 
I have bought the reptile, have yet to use it because I've been working on my glitter glue. There's also a new one that's, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's shaped in a bear. I heard it's really good in comparison to art glitter glue. Love Mod Podge, but it's for one reason and one reason only, and that is to do certain things with. And it's to Mod Podge with. I also have the No Sew, No Sew, and Okay to Wash It. Again, used for those reasons. Fabric Tack, again, used for fabric. Um, <clears throat> Eileen's Tack Glue, I use it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's not my favorite. But there are times where I need it, and I don't mind having a bottle of it to spare hand. Uh, same with the clear gel tacky glue. Now, again, I've heard nothing but amazing things about this one. Like I said, I bought it and have yet to use it because I've had so much um, art glitter designer draws clear glue. If you're a beginner, you will know... You may not know. It's called Art Glitter, but everybody calls it Art Glitter Glue. Now, the reason why is because it does help adhere glitter paper. And it is not easy to adhere glitter paper. There is, excuse me, <clears throat> there is also the Tombow Mono Liquid um, Glue, and it's Aqua. I've seen it in green, and I'm not sure the name of that one, but I had a couple of these, and I'm almost done with this bottle, but I can tell you I'm not the biggest fan. I do love the different tips, one wide, one smaller. <clears throat> There's a small tip, and... <clears throat> I'm sorry about my voice, y'all. I need a drink. And then there's the wider edging set. I can clean that off. The thing about this, it does not dry quick enough for me. This one dries super fast. But because it's liquid and not tape, which I may discuss in another video, that it still gives you room to maneuver. But it dries super fast. So you don't have to sit and wait forever. And then, if I can give you another tip, and maybe I'll do a whole different video on this, is I was not told about these either. I only saw those in videos, and I was like, I have to look them up. I didn't even know the name of them, but I saw everybody using them, and they're just basic tweezers, but they're called reverse tweezers. They are one of my favorite tools. And what happens is, let's see if I can find my other pair. Okay. Here's a pair of tweezers, correct? It stays open. And you go to pick something up, you pinch it. When you let go, it opens back up. With the reverse tweezers, and like I said, this is for beginners. With the reverse tweezers, if you do not know about them, when you squeeze them, they open up instead of closing so, when you let go, let's take this piece of paper. With these, you pick up this piece of paper, you're going to have to squeeze and hold. Because once you let go, it drops. With this one, you want to pick up this piece of paper, you open it up, you close it, let it go. And guess what? You can work and flip because it's holding it itself. It is awesome, amazing. And maybe I'll do my favorite tools for beginners as well. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of give an update for beginners because I know beginners are always coming on and that's where I connect. That's who I want to help. And, you know, I may be in this over a year now, but I'm still learning so, so very much. So with that being said, Y'all be sure to stay tuned. We've got the binder collab this week on Sunday. And this next Sunday will be August. And that will be month eight, week eight. And wow, the different thoughts behind everybody just amazes me. I'm sorry if I've taken up too much time, but I hope I have helped and inspired some new beginners, some new paper crafters. And as always, 
you know my saying. I wish you all the best.